Hi, and welcome to Growing Up, a Lingo Kids podcast that helps kids discover how to be whatever they want to be. Once upon a time, there lived a young man by the name of Winston, who couldn't work out what he wanted to be when he grew up. A fireman, a chocolatier, a fortune cookie writer? The options were endless. So Winston decided to apply for the job of assistant researcher at Emily's Growing Up Laboratory. After meeting with dozens of applicants, Emily takes a chance on Winston and hires him for the job. Together, they'll uncover everything they can about the amazing, crazy, and wonderful jobs in the universe. Going to all lengths to find out about science, sports, entertainment, and more. All with one mission in mind. To help you and Winston find out what you can be when you grow up. So, without further ado, let's start the show. All right, I've got my sunglasses, my sunscreen, a bathing suit. Hmm, what else should I pack for my trip to L.A.? Almost ready, Emily? You don't want to miss your flight. Oh, uh, and here, don't forget your sandals. Thanks, Winston. Sorry to leave you in the lab alone on your first week as my assistant. But you know what to do, right? Yep. Uh, let's see. You said I should lock the door when I leave and definitely do not eat all the snacks again. Uh, even those yummy cheese puffs I like. Very good. Now remember, it's our job to respond to kids' questions about jobs. So make sure you check all the emails too, okay? absolutely Oh, I am so excited to be your assistant, Emily. You will not regret this. <laughs> I'm excited too, Winston. And I hired you just in time. I'm going away for a bit of job research. It'll be a nice change of scenery. Why did you decide to go to Los Angeles? I really want to see Hollywood, the home of American cinema since 1910. Did you know that movies like The Wizard of Oz, Snow White, Peter Pan, Frozen, and oh, my favorite of all time, Shrek, were all made in Hollywood? Oh, it's a magical place. Wow! Hey, I didn't know you were so into movies, Emily. Well, Winston, being an engineer, I'm curious about many things. And I've always had a burning desire to know more about the world of acting and cinema. Cinema. Isn't that the stuff my Aunt Ethel puts in her breakfast rolls? <laughs> That's cinnamon, Winston. Cinema means film. I'll always remember the first film I ever saw. Oh, what was it, Emily? What was it? The Wizard of Oz. Oh, it was so wonderful. The first part of the movie was in black and white, like a lot of the old movies were. But then, when they got to the magical world of Oz in the film, all of the colors were bright and vibrant. It was one of the first big Hollywood films to use color, and everyone loved it. And I'll always remember the first time I saw Shrek. It was so magical. <laughs> that is a great film, too, Winston. But there is a long journey between the first Hollywood films and the ones we see today. Really? Well, what do you mean, Emily? For starters, movies used to be completely silent, with no talking at all right up into the late 1920s. And then in 1920, people finally decided to start talking in movies? <laughs> they weren't just being quiet. New technology was invented that allowed films to have sound. Then the movie The Jazz Singer was made and had a lot of singing and talking and dancing. And the rest is history. Oh, I gotcha. So you want to visit L.A. for all the film history? Or the jazz music? I'm getting confused. Well... I always thought it'd be really fun to be an actor. Oh, acting, huh? To be or not to be. Very good, Winston. That is Shakespeare. He inspired many actors with his plays hundreds of years before TV and film were around. Ooh, that must be the taxi to take me to the airport. Oh, I'm so excited. You'll be okay here in the lab, right? Oh, of course. Don't worry about a thing. That's why people call me old Winston the Reliable. Mm, people call you that? Nope, but maybe they should be. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm coming. Here are the keys, Winston. Thanks, Emily. Have a great trip. Bring me a souvenir. Please keep everything tidy. Don't go wandering too far from the lab. And if you have any questions, you know how to reach me. All righty -oh, I'll be here. Definitely not eating all the snacks, like you said, right? Uh, snacks? Who's got snacks? I don't know what snacks are. <laughs> I have to run. See you soon. Bye. Yo, 
You've got email. You've oh, got I, email. Oh, I should check that. Uh, but first, ooh, I think it's time for a snack. Los Angeles, the city of angels, city of the stars, and the entertainment capital of the world. Wow, the palm trees reach to the sky, and the breeze from the ocean is so nice and refreshing. I've always wanted to visit Hollywood. It'd be awesome to learn about acting from a real star. Maybe if I step into one of these trendy LA coffee shops. Oh, so sorry about that. I didn't see you there. Wait a second. I know you. You're Joel McHale, a famous actor. Do you mind if I interview you about your awesome job? I know you're busy, so I really appreciate it. Let me find a quiet corner for us. I've got my recorder. Hopefully I can work out how to switch it on. Oh, okay, good. Rolling and action. Joel, hello. Can you introduce yourself to the Lingo Kids listeners, please? Just say something like, uh, hey, I'm Joel McHale, and I'm an actor, and I live in Los Angeles, California. All right, ready? Hey, everyone. Welcome to Lingo Kids. I'm Joel McHale, and I am an actor and comedian and presenter, and I live in Los Angeles, California. Excellent. That was, uh, exactly what I asked for. Actors, huh? Sorry I interrupted you. Uh, take it away, Joel McHale. Well, I'm 51. I wear tennis shoes a lot because I like comfortable shoes. Mm -hmm. I have two sons. They're 18 and 15. I have a wife named Sarah. I'm an actor and a host or presenter, as they say sometimes in Europe. And um, I've been doing that for a long time since mm -hmm. I was a kid. I guess I pretend and then I pretend to be somebody else or I am myself and I stand in front of a camera I guess you could just say I pretend and then I tell jokes. Mm -hmm. And how did you become an actor? Boy, uh, that's a good question. My first thing I ever acted in was when I was in first grade. We did a play called It's a Small World, which is based on the Disney ride. I played a snake and a monkey, and I played a, a bell ringer from Switzerland. And I played all these tiny little parts and my parents were like, what is happening? And who is this kid? That's what they told me later on. And that was my first play and I loved it. I loved being on stage. So that's how I started becoming an actor. And then I started doing plays. But I guess I was about 13. And uh, I just thought, I want to do this. Acting is, is a weird, wonderful art. And I know that you need to work hard and you have to know your lines and you have to know where to walk with your blocking. That's for plays and for movies and TV. You have to be there very early usually, so you got to show up early. Right now I work in Vancouver. I get to set at about 6 a.m. and then a nice person does my hair and makeup and we shoot until 7 at night. And we do the same thing five days in a row. You have to be pretty ambitious, uh, which means you have to try really hard because there's lots of other people that want to act. And then um, when the camera's on you or the curtain goes up, uh, be ready to talk out loud. Where do you find inspiration? Oh, well, it depends. It's from all over the place. I'm inspired by performances that I see. I'm inspired by my friends that talk about it. I'll be inspired by a script for whatever reason. Way back when, I wanted to do this, and so I get very excited just thinking about the opportunity to act and wear a costume and try to find the truth of whatever scene I'm in. I love that stuff, and I don't want it to stop. So I get inspiration from all over. So now we know what gets Joel McHale inspired. Let's find out what it's like working on a real Hollywood set. What is it like working on a Hollywood set? Um, well, it, they're all different. And a lot of the sets in Hollywood aren't in Hollywood. They're all over the place. They're in Vancouver, they're in Georgia, they're in Louisiana and New Mexico and 
New York and Europe. Um, I shot a lot of things in LA, thankfully, because then I get to go sleep in my own bed at night and see my family. I think it's the best business on the planet and they give you free food. And that's big part of it. I love that. And they give you coffee and everyone is there to make these scenes good. It's really fun. The people who are in the lighting department, sets department, the props department, the hair and makeup department, the wardrobe department. There's so many different parts. Then there's the producers and there's the people that do provide the food, all the guys that drive all the trucks that are moving all this stuff around. And there's the people that manage the buildings and the directors and then the assistant directors and all the production assistants. And it takes a huge number of people to make all this stuff happen. Mm -hmm. And everybody works really hard. Wow, I'm really starting to imagine it. Hollywood is like a big machine with all these talented people coming together to make art. One second, I'm just curious how many people it takes. Wow, okay, so a quick search online says that it takes thousands of people to make a single movie sometimes. Huge movies like Avatar and Iron Man 3 had around 3,000 people working on each, including the actors, the crew, and all of the artists. Wow. Uh-oh, it's Winston. Um, hi, Winston. Everything okay back at the lab? Hey, uh, question for you. When you told me not to eat all the snacks... Did you also mean the yummy granola bars that were hidden in the back drawer of your desk? Because I was thinking... Winston, Winston, Winston. I'm kind of in the middle of something important right now. Uh, can I call you back in a oh, bit? Uh, okay. I'll just uh, sit here um, holding this granola bar until I hear back from you. Not eating it at all. I promise. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Okay, but maybe just a little more. <sighs> now, where were we? Oh, I remember. Joel was telling me how being an actor can sometimes be hard. It's not all fun and free food. That's the thing about actors. Failure is part of the game. And you fail, for the most part, you fail way more than you succeed. There's all sorts of parts that I've auditioned for that I didn't get. Uh, but then when things work, it's magic. So those magic moments, like climbing to the top of a mountain, are worth it for the times that you're in the deep valleys. If you've got your eyes focused on what you want to do, which is if you want to be an actor, then keep doing. If you're a lawyer, you practice law. If you're a doctor, you practice medicine. Keep going with that. You're going to make mistakes, no doubt, and you'll learn from all those. And it'll make you a better actor or performer. You should get into an acting class or get into a play. That's where you should start because we have these dreams in our hearts for whatever reason, and we want to usually go after those. <sighs> it all starts with a dream. <sighs> what a story, what a career. Oh, I've just got to call Winston and tell him about my meeting with Joel. Howdy, Emily's Fun Factory Laboratory. Winston speaking, how may I help y'all? Winston, why are you answering the phone like that? Uh, so I've been reading a bit about acting since you brought it up. I was just practicing my southern accent, you know, to add to my acting resume. How's Hollywood? Are you famous yet? You're never gonna believe it. I actually ran into actor Joel McHale. That is so cool! Wait, do I know Joel McHale? Yes, he's this awesome actor, host, and comedian who's worked on a lot of TV shows and movies you've probably seen, like Spy Kids and Spider-Man 2. Whoa, and you just ran into him? That's awesome! It really is! He sat and talked with me, and now I have so many great tips on how to be an actor. Oh, you gotta spill. What did he say? Well, he told me that if you want to be an actor, it's super important to keep going even when you fail. It's not an easy job, and many actors have to work for years until they make it big. Uh-huh, okay. Important to keep going. Make it big. Got it. Uh, I I'm taking notes. What else? He told me about all the other people it takes to make a movie. Hundreds or thousands of people in some cases. There are special workers who operate the cameras and the lights. There's artists who build the sets and paint the backgrounds. And there are special people who bring the food and the snacks. Oh, we could use one of those in the lab. Well, I hope you get back quick so we can chat more all about this. Plus, I am out of snacks. You ate all the snacks? Now, don't worry, missus. Don't fret none. 
There's more cheese puffs in that there grocery store. Do you have to keep doing that southern accent? Hey, Emily, I gotta run. Um, I have to go work on my acting skills some more. I'll see you when you're back tomorrow. Okay, bye. See you soon. Wait, Winston. Well, at least I got to learn a lot about acting from a real pro. Hey, thanks for listening and coming along to learn about the life of an actor in this extra special episode with our extra special guest, actor Joel McHale. It was awesome to hear all the fun things actors get to do on the job. See you next time on Growing Up. You dream of becoming a dancer, a lion trainer, celebrity chauffeur. Winston, are you curious for more? You know it. Check out Lingo Kids, the number one learning app for kids. They have a ton of original games and videos and songs that are fun, educational, and can help boost your math, reading, and literacy skills. Download the Lingo Kids app and give it a try for free. Activities and podcasts on our YouTube channels.